All right, so what do we wanna do when it comes to protecting real estate? What are these four strategies that I'm talking about? Well, one of them you probably already know. It's a simple strategy that everyone should have employed already if they have real estate. And that one is insurance. Now you gotta insure your property. I talk to people all the time and think, hey, if I use asset protection, I don't need to have any insurance on my property. That is wrong. If you operate with that presumption, you that is a ticket to go to jail. If you get sued, they will take your assets from you. They'll blow through your entity and hold you personally liable. You always have to maintain a reasonable amount of insurance. But here's the key. How do you find the right type of policy in order to insure your property, especially if you're using limited liability companies or business entities? Well, what you want is what is referred to as a DP3 policy to cover your real estate. Now, I have some another video on, uh, on that, just insuring your real estate. Be sure to check it out on my channel here. Uh, I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video where you can go and you can understand the differences in types of policies. And there'll be uh, some information on who you might want to check out to uh, acquire that type of policy. All right, so the first one is insurance. Now, what's the second way to protect your real estate? Well, it's what everyone talks about, using limited liability companies. That's right. You want to set up an LLC to protect your, your rental real estate or investment real estate. So here's an LLC. You set it up and you want to get your property in there. Either you buy directly in the name of the LLC, if you can do that, or you acquire it in your own name. And then after the fact, you deed it into this LLC. Now, what type of benefit is that going to give you? Well, primarily what you're going to get is this. If something happens on the inside of this box, as I like to refer to it, something happens in here, you know, maybe the tenant, uh, I have a client right now, for example, that's dealing with a toxic mold issue. Kicked out a tenant, tenant's not happy, so what do they do? They turn around and they say, oh, the property's full of mold or something was leaking. Well, those issues are very costly for you. So you wanna make sure that you've adequately protected yourself. So with an LLC, well, the way I always refer to it is what happens in the box stays in the box, just like this. So it doesn't come out and get you personally. Now there's also one other benefit of having an LLC for your real estate is that depending on where you set it up. Now, a lot of people miss this. They don't understand that not all LLC laws are equal. That is, depending on the state in which you go to set up your LLC, you may or may not have the protection I'm about to share with you. On some of my other videos you can watch on LLCs, I cover that. But what I'm talking about is charging order protections, meaning this, that if you're the owner of the LLC right here and you're sued individually, you wanna make sure that your LLC has this very important protection so they can't take your LLC from you. So they can't get to the underlying property itself. So that's why we use limited liability companies. Inside protection, and what I was referring to here, is outside protection. They can't get into the box from the outside. Now, beyond insurance and LLCs, what other? what is the third strategy you might want to employ when protecting your real estate? How about liens? Okay, because when it comes to LLC or to real estate, that is, and holding in the LLC, if somebody's thinking about suing, what are they looking for? Recovery. What can they recover? And so one thing to consider if you have real estate inside of an LLC like this, and of course that you have insured it, um, let's say I had $200,000 in equity. Now, if I'm an attorney representing someone that's going after this property, I'm thinking, wow, $200,000 in equity, my cut is 50% of whatever I collect, there's a $100,000 payday for me. There's Christmas for my family. Now, on the other hand, why not make that property look like it has no equity? You can do that if you set up the structure the right way and you lean your own property. Yeah, get this. Why not set up a structure over here, a separate LLC, typically we're gonna set them up in Wyoming or Delaware in a state that doesn't have your name associated with it, because that's what's key here. We don't want people to see that you're doing this on your own assets. So you set it up in one of these states and then you enter into a line of credit agreement. Okay, just like a, a HELOC for your personal residence. What we're gonna do with our residential real estate. So you put together this line of credit agreement between these two entities here, between the Wyoming entity here and your, uh, let's say this property is in Idaho, LLC right here, and you'd agree to loan it $200,000. Now, before you get to too concerned about this, wondering, well, I don't have $200,000 to do this with, it doesn't matter. This is purely a smoke screen. That's the whole reason why we're doing it. So you put this line of credit agreement there, in exchange, you're gonna have to give back a, if it already has a mortgage on it, a second deed of trust and then to that limited liability company. So here's the beauty of this strategy, is that if somebody's looking at this property right here wondering, 
you know, is there equity there? What they'll see is that there's a first, let's say with Wells Fargo for 275, and there's a second lien that's been filed against it with uh, Blue Funding, and maybe that's the name of your LLC up here, LLC for 200K. Now between the two of those, we have $475,000 now encumbering this property. Hey, the property may only be worth 400K. Yeah, because you can choose what amount you want to put on there. You don't want to go too far above uh, the current fair market value because then it might start to look suspicious. An attorney might think, hey, that's probably a friendly lien strategy. But with this technique here, if you just have one property and you're doing that, I think it's a great way to make attorneys go away because you're making the asset appear as if there's no equity for them if they are successful with their lawsuit. So the idea is to push them into settling for your policy limits. So the third way we protect rental real estate is with friendly liens. Now, the fourth way to protect rental real estate uh, in your investments is, let's set it up so people don't even know I own it, right? We don't want even to know that you own it. So the way we do that is we start with an LLC in another state before we create this structure. Typically what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna use that same technique with the Delaware Wyoming structure. I'm gonna create this one right here, Delaware or Wyoming, where my name is not associated with it. So I'm not associated with this entity right here. You set that one up first, and so you have what we refer to as anonymity, and then you create this LLC up here, this second LLC. So if it's an Idaho, it would be my Idaho Limited Liability Company. And the key to make this work is to set it up as a member managed LLC. All right, set it up as a member managed limited liability company. That way, what happens when you file it, you're pointing all the information on the state website to this entity here. Nothing points back to you. The beauty of this technique is that if somebody's considering bringing an action against you personally, this is how, I mean, when we're talking about protecting real estate, it's not just protecting you from your real estate, it's also protecting your real estate from you and the claims that people could bring against you. If somebody runs an asset search on you, you don't appear to own any businesses. They don't even know that you have this stuff because of the way you've set it up. You could have 100 properties, 100 separate LLCs, all pointing back to that one purple box and no one would know it when you use this type of strategy. So those are four key strategies when it comes to protecting your rental real estate. You wanna make sure you have insurance, you wanna make sure you have LLCs, you wanna look at using friendly liens, and more importantly, you wanna make sure that you have anonymity for it. My name is Clint Coons with Anderson Business Advisors. Be sure to check out some of my other videos on using limited liability companies to protect your real estate investments.